Hi guys, it's Hillary. I am here in my studio. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit today um, about an issue that came up with one of the students in my teacher training. And I am so glad it came up because it happens throughout your Pilates career, no matter how long you've been teaching. Um, but it's a really good thing to understand and get a handle on when you're learning to teach or you're a new teacher um, as well as more experienced. But here's the situation. She has a client, she's doing assisted teaching hours that has an exercise degree, was a personal trainer, like for a living, but has never done Pilates before. Um, and her questions were pretty simple. How do you get a client to just move, listen, and not to anticipate what you're going to say? Because the client just moves on, just anticipates what's going to happen. Um, she also says, how do you keep them focused on what you are saying? Rather than thinking them thinking where they're going and anticipating that. So I have had this with clients that were teachers themselves or clients that just want to come on, come on, come on, come on, tell me, come on, come on, come on, come on, just like hurry through. So there's lots of different situations for this. So how do you do that? How do you keep them focused, not anticipating as to where you're gonna go with them? Especially if you're doing something like um, in our training, we do traditional, um, or if you're doing classical where there is an order. And so on the mat and the reformer, they might know what's coming up next. So when you're teaching, you're kind of teaching to that individual in that moment, in that hour, on that day. So their issues may be completely different in terms of what you saw last week or two days ago, whatever it is. So you don't want them just flying through the movement, right? So a good example is with your cueing. It's very clear, very direct, and very simple. Also, not leaving them room to go into that head in terms of jumping ahead. And I don't mean by just throwing words at them and da 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 da, da talking non, you know, nonstop. That's a whole different story. Um, but let's take, for example, when you're coming out of the 100, because this was one that happened for her, is she just flopped out of the 100 and was like, uh, you know, those kind of things. So let's say you're going from the 100 and you're gonna go right into a roll up, right? and you're on the mat. And you can take this with anything, and we'll use different examples. Um, so as they're you know, doing their 100, and you're counting, inhale, exhale, and then you get to that last one, right? So they know they're coming out of it. So you say, okay, inhale, exhale. Okay, keep exhaling, keep reaching those legs, curling down, reaching your arms. Now keep reaching your arms, keep reaching your legs. Take those arms up towards the ceiling. Take your inhale, curl your head, look towards your feet. Keep reaching your legs, rolling up. So you're just talking them through the whole thing. So when they're coming out of it, you've already given them something to focus on, which is the reach of the arms and the reach of the legs. Sounds super simple, but instead of them just rolling down going, okay, in their head, okay, so now we're gonna probably do roll up, so I'm just gonna reach back and roll up. You're giving them a tool, you're giving them something I don't know what that accent was, it just came out of my mouth. You're giving them something to focus on. So let's take it deeper. Um, I had a client that I would say, okay, we're gonna do pulling straps, and immediately they're grabbing, grabbing everything and they're just going, right? And so what I will say now is, you know, okay, what we're gonna focus on here and give them what you're gonna focus on. Don't tell them what the exercise is yet especially if they know what it is. Just say, we're gonna really focus on, let's take pulling straps, for example. I want you to, work, the next thing we're gonna do, I want you to really focus on the length in your hips, the pressing of your hips into your box and the reach of your legs. So I want you to lie on your box. So you're just telling them what to do. Just lie on your box, and I want you to take your straps, however you get them to hold the straps, and reach for the ground. Keep reaching for the ground, press the hips. Now pull those straps. So you're giving them simple, clear, but there's things for them to kind of focus on 
as they go. So let's say pulling straps, right? Let's say you did pulling straps, you did the T pull. Okay, so in their last T pull, and say, okay, reach for those walls, reach, reach, reach. Keep reaching your legs, keep bringing the arms, keep reaching, 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 keep reaching those legs, bring the arms. So you're giving them not to just flop out of it, right? So it's really, um, it's really about giving that client to keep them focused, to keep them from jumping ahead, something to continue focusing on as you then lead them into the next thing. And it takes practice, it takes um, experience with the clients, and the client that maybe is the teacher, the client that um, is a, is a uh, personal trainer, so they think they know everything, right? Um, those are the ones that are a little more challenging, um, and you can focus on just that breaking it down, right? So giving them, let's say with the 100, giving them something because maybe the, the personal trainer just said, I'm gonna put my arms and oh, this is great, it's all about my abs, right? It's all abs. And giving them that opposition, right? Giving them the reach of the legs, giving them the reach of the arms, and kind of pinpointing where you think you can carry that through the whole work. So if you notice with this person in the hundred or the footwork or wherever you're starting, something's needing work, right? Hip, connection to the arm and the back, the legs. Take that and carry it through the whole work. See if it starts to get better. Also, it's giving them that focus the whole time. I love how I'm using my arms today. So it gives them that focus to just connect with something. Um, I think that answered her question there. Um, the other thing is trying to anticipate the next move. And that's really, again, back to someone who starts to get the order or starts to get things in their mind, which is good. But on the other hand, they're jumping ahead of you and you haven't really given them any cues or anything that you want them to hear. So again, a lot of times with, because because in the mat and the reformer, we stick to the, the traditional order. Of course, you'll leave things out that aren't appropriate for that client, or maybe they don't need that day. Um, but they'll know because you did something and they know what's next. So they immediately start setting up and I, and I just say, oh, no, we're not doing that today. <laughs> just to, like, we're not doing that today. Um, or you can say, Oh yeah, we're going to do, but before we start, before we start, so that it's not a negative thing. You're not saying, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. It's just kind of like, yes, this is where we're going, but before we begin and then whatever you need, or if they, it's like, um, hug a tree or something, right? And they're sitting and they, they're like, you know, sitting, it's like, we're gonna do a hug a tree. Okay. And they go and you say, okay, okay, great open up your arms and I want you to just hold here for a moment and really squeeze your handles. Push into your legs and grow tall. And see, are your shoulders over your hips? Can you maybe move your shoulders back a little bit? And then for those that, that know me, I talk about with Care Reserve, I talk about the containers because I love it so much. And so I might talk about their containers here and then squeeze those handles. Now, keep growing tall, keep growing tall. So I, I kind of shut it down a little bit, but I let them let them go, right? And I say, okay, great. But now I want you to do this. And then you can carry it in. So a couple of little tips. Um, if you need more, let me know. You can email me, um, whatever. But that's just a little help on those clients because we all get them at one point or another. Um, and it's really easy to kind of retrain them. Um, if you nip it in the bud right at the beginning and just let them know. Um, another thing when you can get back to tactile is that tactile cueing. So when you first start is placing your hands. If it's footwork, placing your hands on their legs, grounding them, saying, hey, I'm, he I'm the one that's leading you here. I'm guiding you. So listen to me. Um, if you're on the mat, you know, same thing, just kind of getting them grounded somewhere and connecting with them in that way. So anyway, 
Hope that helps and I will see you later. Bye.